Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton from the Flourish Academy and today we will be testing the auto retouching features inside of Lightroom. But first, make sure you visit our website at www.flourish.academy to learn more about everything we offer including our freebies and courses and join us in our private Facebook community where we support photographers of all levels. And if you need any new camera gear and equipment, please check out our sponsor, Why camera.com for all of your photography needs. You will be supporting a small family owned business. Today, I'd like to test the adaptive presets that Adobe provided for retouching portraits inside of Lightroom. Adaptive presets use AI to detect certain areas of an image and then make changes to just that area. I'm currently using version 12.4, so if you do not see these adaptive presets in your preset panel, you may need to just update your version. There are three presets I'd like to look at today to determine which one I like the most, but I'll probably end up creating my own because I'm very particular about my retouching. The first thing I'm going to do is create a couple virtual copies of this image so that we can experiment. I'm going to press Command apostrophe, that's Control apostrophe, on the keyboard in order to create virtual copies of this image. I'm going to create three of those so I now have four images in total that I can play with and evaluate. I'm going to apply the polished portrait to this image and then next the glamour portrait and then finally the enhance portrait. I am going to press K on my keyboard to reveal all of the masks that Lightroom created to adjust different areas of this image. And if I just quickly look at these photos that's the original and then the virtual copies none of these really stand out to me as being perfect or exceptional but let's zoom in and see if we can notice a difference again this was the enhance this is the glamour and this is the polished i can tell you right away i do not like the polished if i look at the before and after i don't know it's just doing several things i don't care for the glamour that is probably more up my alley, although I do see some adjustments I'd like to make. And the enhance is just a little bit too basic for me. So I'm probably going to look at the features of the Glamour portrait and then create my own because I actually don't want Lightroom to do anything to the hair. And I can see in the mask panel that for all three of these portraits, it did. And it's just not something I typically do. So if I begin with the Glamour portrait as my base, what I'm going to do is take this hair layer and just delete hair. I don't want that mask. And then I need to look at the rest of these and enhance them the way I would like to see them. I'm really curious what Lightroom did to the lips because it actually changed her lip color. And you see that it increased the tint to 45. I typically do not want to do that. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And now that I look at this, I'm thinking what in the world else is Lightroom doing to look? Oh, it's taking down the texture, trying, okay, to make it a little bit softer. Okay, that's not something I would typically do in a retouch, but I don't hate it. So we'll leave it. Let's look at the iris and pupil. If we turn that off and on and we click it, we can see exactly what Lightroom is doing. It's increasing the exposure. It took down the temperature and increased the saturation to 45, which I think is a little bit much. So I'm going to pull down on that. Clarity is up. So that's like, you know, a perceived sharpening, if you will. I don't mind that. I do think I might want to bring up maybe not the shadows, maybe the highlights, maybe both. Let's see. I'm just experimenting with these sliders to see what I would like to create for my portraits. Okay, that looks pretty good. We have eyebrows. Let's see what's happening to eyebrows. Turn that on and off. I did not see much of a change there. Oh, it's bringing down the shadows. So it's filling them in a little bit. That's probably harmless. Let's look at the eye, the whites of the eye that I can't pronounce. Oh, that actually did have a pretty big impact. You can see if you take this way up, that's what it is affecting. But we just want that up maybe 
a little bit. And most importantly in retouching for me is the skin. So I'm really curious what Lightroom chose to do here. I see shadows are up. That usually does help even out skin tone. Temperature is down. That's an interesting choice. And then we have the texture and clarity sliders, which are typically the two that I use when I would like to impact skin. I will say I do not like clarity for skin because it has this very powdery, almost flat look. And that's because it just blurs the edges of pixels. So I, maybe I'll take the clarity down a little bit, but not as far as Lightroom had it. I'm more interested in the texture slider. So if you take it down too far, it obviously looks fake. So you want to make this look as natural as possible. One of my mentors said once, subtle yet significant. <laughs> and I really like that. Let's take a look at the overall before and after. I think that looks pretty good. So let's navigate over to the preset panel and click the plus button to create a preset. And I'm just going to call this FA face. And obviously we need to check something to make sure these things happen. And it's just going to be the masking in this case. And this is important. If I check everything and I wanna add another preset, a global preset for the overall image, then it, this could potentially override it or that preset could override this one, whatever. So what I like to do is only select the things I actually want to have happen. In this case, it's the masking. And so I will just create that. And then I will test it on a few different portraits. And I will show you the good news about this. Let me move this over a little bit. Is when I run this preset, let's zoom out. And we look at the before and after. We can see it did a pretty good job but you can come into this amount slider and either turn this adjustment down or up. This was huge. I was very, very excited to see this because portraits are going to be different. You're going to have different types of skin, different lighting, etc. So if we look at this image that my friend Valerie sent me and we do the face, my guess is I will probably pull down on this one for her. Let's look at the before and after. Very subtle. We'll zoom in. Whoa. Okay. Not that much. <laughs> Let's back that up. Look at the before and after. Yeah, that's really subtle. And I like that for that image. This one, I think I would like it turned up. It's a little bit more glamorous. Okay, that's a little bit too far, so let's bring it back down. Okay, the point is these adaptive presets are amazing and so fun to work with. I'm creating a bunch of different presets for different types of shoots so that I can quickly edit my photos. So imagine you are a wedding photographer, newborn, boudoir, and you would like to put these adjustments on every photo that you import. You could have the retouching done before you even go in to look at your session. It is amazing. It can speed up your workflow so much. If you scroll down in the presets panel, you will see all the adaptive presets that Adobe included in Lightroom. We were just looking at a few of the portrait presets. We have many more under there, um, including texture for the hair, smooth the hair, clothes. We have sky presets and we have subject presets. What I encourage you to do is play with these and then create your own. It's so much fun. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.